Let's talk about contraception. It's a four syllable word that means what someone might do to avoid making a baby. So let's start with talking about what makes a baby. An egg and sperm that meet in a place where a baby can grow have a chance of growing into a baby. Eggs come from ovaries, sperm come from testicles. Which means if you don't want to make a baby right now, think about how to keep your sperm or eggs from meeting whichever one you don't have in your body. One way to not make a baby is to not have sex with someone who has the baby making item that you don't. So if you have eggs, avoid sex with people who have sperm or vice versa. This is difficult because sometimes people are forced to have sex against their will. Sometimes people decide in the spur of the moment to have sex when they never thought they would. And the reality is that most people choose to have sex sometime in their life. Another way to not make a baby is to have surgery so your eggs or sperm don't come out anymore. This is difficult. It takes money, a medical provider, the actual surgery, and if you later decide you'd like to have kids, it can be difficult and expensive to reverse. Another way to avoid making a baby is to use barriers to minimize the likelihood that sperm could get next to an egg. As an added bonus, some barriers reduce your chances of getting a sexually transmitted infection or disease. Barriers include condoms and diaphragms, both of which can be used with or without spermicide, which kills sperm. The downside of barriers is they often require taking a pause before having sex, but there are ways to minimize this problem. Vaginal condoms and diaphragms with spermicide can be placed ahead of time, so as long as the person using them finds them comfortable, they can offer contraception without interruption between foreplay and sex. The final way we're going to talk about to avoid making a baby is when an egg-bearing person uses hormones or devices that inhibit the possibility of pregnancy. So let's talk about copper and hormonal IUDs. IUDs are small T-shaped devices that are placed in a uterus. They can be left inside the body for 3 to 12 years or removed earlier if the user wants it out. The hormonal IUD is similar to the implant in that they both use only the hormone progestin. The implant is placed under the skin of the upper arm and can provide contraceptive benefits for up to three years. The IUDs and implant are the most effective methods of preventing pregnancy with an over 99% effectiveness rate, and there's no user effort once the method is placed. There are some downsides. Both the copper and hormonal IUDs can change the bleeding pattern of a user. The copper IUD sometimes causes heavier and more painful monthly bleeds, and the hormonal IUD sometimes causes light spotting or no bleeding at all. Plus, both IUDs tend to cause sporadic bleeding throughout the first three months after placement. Also, some folks are a bit weary of having something hanging out in their uterus or implanted under their skin. Next up is the birth control pill. This is still one of the most popular options for contraception on the market, and it's usually a combination of two hormones, progestin and estrogen. The pill is a very reliable birth control method. If the pill is used correctly, that is, taken at the same time each day, fewer than 1 in 100 users of the pill will become pregnant. If the pill is not always used correctly, 9 out of 100 users will become pregnant. You can learn everything you want to know about the pill on our website. The pill is similar to the patch and the ring in that they are all combined hormonal methods of birth control. The patch and the ring just use different ways of getting the hormones into the body. The patch inserts hormones through the skin and is changed out every week. The ring inserts hormones through the vaginal walls and is placed for three weeks, removed for one week, and then a new ring is placed. There is so much more to cover about contraceptive methods than we've covered here, but you can learn more at bedsider.org, on our website, or you can talk to someone in person. Student Wellness has share counselors ready to answer all of your sexual health questions, or you can always visit a provider in Campus Health Services.